periodic table, we need to know the basic structure of periodic table and we need to know how things are when it comes to the periodic table and how we, we, we can make use of it. So this is some basic notes about periodic table that I want you guys to know. So let's quickly go over the basic structure of periodic table. Uh, first of all, does anybody know how elements are arranged in the periodic table? What is the order? They're arranged according to the number of electrons. Number of protons. Uh, uh, so protons. Electrons can change, right? Even though in the atom, electrons are same as protons, electrons are very easy to change. Whenever anything reacts, it changes its electrons. So it's very important that you don't use that. So it is about protons. So yeah, they're arranged in order of proton number. So you start here one and you go left to right, then down. That's the order. So one, two, three, four, all the way till 10, then 11, 12. But which way there's this gap for the first three periods and period is a row. So from left to right, you have period and the number of shells of electrons that that atom has, that is based on its period. So that is why periodic table is structured this way. So anything that's in second row will mean that it has two electron shells with electrons in it. Achha, that does not mean that it only has two shells. Any atom can have infinite number of shells, but only two of them are filled. That's what the second row means. The fifth row means that five electron shells are filled. Because electrons always fill the low level electrons, low energy levels first. So that's why the lowest five will be filled. The rest are just empty. So if they're empty, we don't really concern ourselves with those. They're still there. Shells can be infinite, but five are filled up. From top to bottom, you have groups. Groups are basically uh, the columns in the periodic table. And they tell us about valence electron. Valence means in the last shell. So group one here, and you can see that group number is written in a Roman number. So group one means it has one valence electron. So that means it has many shells or doesn't matter how many shells it has. The last shell will have one electron. Second shell will have, the second group will have two valence electrons, seventh valence electrons in the seventh one. And that simply means that that is the number of electrons in the last shell. So if you pick a random atom here, let's say I pick sulfur, then I can know that, okay, sulfur has six in the last shell and it has three rows. So based on its position, I can be like, okay, it has six in the last shell and it has three total periods. So that means first one is filled, second one is filled. There you go. The electronic configuration, I can just put it right there. I don't need to think okay, how many electrons does it have in total? How many electrons will it fill out? Because I know that inner electrons are always filled, inner shells are always filled. So that's why I can figure it out like this. Can you use the same method to tell me the configuration of aluminum? So it's in group three and row number three. So that means it has three shells and last one is three. So first one will be two, second one will be eight. And there you go. That's how we know. That. Now, the next thing is, what about these in the middle? Can we always do this? Now, turns out we can always find the inner shells. But in our syllabus, in O-Levels and IGCSE, we stick to first 20. For the ones that are beyond that, from scandium all the way till uranium, we just need to know that, okay, it has this valence electrons, or okay, it has this row, and third, the kind of bonding that it has. They will not ask about the complete configuration for atoms beyond calcium. So calcium is the biggest atom. That they'll ask you for. Let's do calcium. It's in group two. One, two, three, four rows. So there you go. That is four rows. And the last one has two. So that means first one has two, second one has eight, third one has eight. There you go. That's the configuration. And you know you're done it right because when you add it up, you get 20. 